So qualifying's over. We started drinking beer and eating tacos. Everything was going really well until someone took the valve covers off so we could look at all the valve train and noticed we had a pretty good milkshake in our motor. Um, and so rather than deal with it like adults, we called the engine builder, Mike Miller. And uh, he came over and said, don't worry, it's all good. So we're gonna change the oil and uh, clean out the filter, knock down the water pressure to the motor, and then just send it again tomorrow, like we did today. Hey Mike, yes. what is in the motor? I don't mean I don't mean the milkshake, but like say, it looks like water. oil and water to me. But the, the the ad didn't have a lot of information. It just said, "Ready to rip." This thing's amazing. Pretty much. Well, um, what? Like, what is this? It's a big block Chevy, but big like, block Chevy. What, what is it? Dart aluminum block. Okay. Sunny Bryant crankshaft, Carrillo rods, CP pistons. It's got bullet camshaft. So nice stuff. It's all good stuff. And pure Lake Mean water. Yeah, I say, and, and you built it, and now it's milkshaked. Technically, <laughs> I fixed it for somebody. Oh, that's right. I you... was not the original builder. Who was? <laughs> <laughs> We're all friends here, if you wanted to say. You know. Hey, friends tell secrets. This isn't normally what you do Saturday night after qualifying. Okay, but it's gonna be all right. Actually, it's pretty normal. This is normal. Oh man, I found broken. John at C and J. Where did you find that in the back of the valley? It's in the back of the valley. We're gonna have to come up with some diesel or some kerosene or something like that to kind of flood the valley a little bit and wash some of that stuff out. Okay. You said you did close the valve way down. I haven't done it yet. I was gonna let you look at it, but yeah, it was 20 degrees off of full flow, I guess. Yeah, it basically, it needs to be completely closed and then barely cracked open. Okay. And what we'll do? Just let it keep going. Um, they go. Oh, you're six. Yes, your first and second. <laughs> QE and then uh, okay, 660. That's good. That's good. Oh, wow. See how much stuff is in the valley? We need to oh, yeah, we dump need to some out. through here to kind of flush that out, and then we'll prime it some more and suck that stuff out. All right, so uh, right now what we're doing is trying to get the milky oil out of the engine. And in the lifter valley, there's just a bunch of it sitting in places where it doesn't want to drain back. So right now we have siphoned diesel out of Austin's toter home and we're now pumping the diesel into the motor to get all that stuff down to the pan so we can pump the rest of the milkshake out of the motor before we put new oil in it. Um, yeah, it got a lot of it out, but now there's just there's a bunch of diesel in there that we gotta push over. How about um, compressed air? That's what I'm, exactly what I'm. Oh yeah. This boat is not gonna rust now. Not at all. Get an RV with more insulation. There it goes. Oh, there it goes. Okay, we want to catch a bunch of this stuff because it's just pushing out the nasty stuff right now. How much of a stickler are you for, like, as soon as that one's opening, doing it. Does it matter how far it goes? I try to catch it as early as possible, generally. Okay. And the, and the intake, how far up do you do it? As soon as it starts on its way up. Oh, okay. All right. Let's do it again. <laughs> Test it for spring pressure. Um, they're, it's, all, it's all brand new hardware on this thing. Springs will kind of break in to a certain point. Just want to make sure they're all even across the board. All the intakes are the same. All the exhausts are the same. Valve spring? One broken valve spring. Okay. That was the piece that was in there? Yeah. Okay. Broke the inner and the outer. Oh, and the outer. Does he, ha I don't know if he has any spare springs in here or not. I'll go look. Um. All right, so motor milkshake, we fixed that. Uh, we're checking valve lash and we now have some broken valve springs. 
Um, so we're borrowing some from my friend Josh, who has a similar but not the same motor. It'll be fine. Good take, good take. All right, all right. Cut. That's not supposed to be like that. Cut, 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 <laughs> cut. Oh, these souvenirs. Yeah, you know, uh, you can go ahead and freshen it up. We're going to put some springs in and massive water. <laughs> A lot of water. Tons of water. That's the, that's the fix for everything. On something like this, a set of springs should last all year. Okay. As much, I mean, as many laps as you want to make in a season, these oh, yeah. springs should last. That would be great. A de you know, a good set of springs should last in this application. If the engine speed that you're running. This is one of Josh's exhaust. We need, we need an intake. Because jo Josh uses a different spring on his exhaust. We need what he uses on his intake. 100% like you never left the so then we Or, or to then. suck a towel up into the intake. We could do that too. <laughs> We can totally do that. We can spend a whole day cutting it back with out a razor while, knife? while everyone else is racing. That was, that was. It's amazing how tight that'll get wound up. That was incredible. Hey, you know what? I had blisters you, after that. Until you put a camshaft in a motor at 3 a.m. I was with you. I know you were. <laughs> Didn't Busby bring happened. you that camshaft? Huh? Didn't Busby bring yeah. you that camshaft? Camshaft, blisters, gaskets, oil. To to it's the only race parts. I won all year. That's the key. Are we back in business? <laughs> Are these from Patty Melt? Yeah. It's the correct spring because it's on the motor. Whether it's the exact right correct spring, but it'll do for now, so we're gonna be good. I wonder when it broke, because I never heard it. It did slow down that fast. Oh, yeah. You're right. We went slower the second time we went 660. Yeah. I thought you ran a 412, 412. No, it ran a 39. No, we ran a 412 and a 412 back to back. No, it was 4. We ran a 439, right? Oh, 415? Yeah. Oh, it went 412? I was all like sad earlier. I was like, 439, what is this? Oh, all right, cool. Then I have no idea when that broke. Maybe it broke on the way into the ramp on the last pass or something. Well, at least then we know our tune-up is consistent for this weekend. We'll be fine tomorrow morning. It goes QE and then the 660 shootout thing and then unblown fuel jet. We had so much go sideways today. Like the first pass, the valve opened from the hit. The second pass, the valve I didn't even make the pass because it was open. The third pass, it went down, and then we lost forward reverse, and I had to get towed off the track because I didn't make it into the in ramp because I had no. I, I, you know, it was. Was that? Yeah, that was. Yeah. No, I was sitting out there like, just like roadkill and everything. You don't need a script, dude. I just show up and it just falls apart. It's just how it, I didn't build this. I know. It was perfect before. I, dude, I got like, you know, I got good luck, you know? <laughs> That's what I'm calling it. That's what, you, what you're going for? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if, I, if I don't, it would be depressing. Are we going to drain that oil out that's in it? What's that? Are we going to drain that, those six quarts that are in it and then put fresh in again? We already cleaned it. Yeah. yeah. No, we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have to do it in the morning in a hurry. We're going to have to start it up. and then. What time is it? Almost nine. Is it 10? Yeah. Shirt? But Josh told me last night three times. 10 o'clock. Yeah, you need to call Shell real quick, but. Too late to fire it? I don't think so. I think we can. All right. We'll fire it and then probably see what the oil looks like before the valve cover off. We may change the oil again. We can't not start it. Like, oh, we're going to. That would be weird. We're going to. Yeah. Yeah. We will ask for forgiveness. We don't have to wrap the throttle and stuff, but we will start it just to... We'll, we'll just turn our phones off. Why not? Then no one can call us. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I tried to call you. I couldn't hear you. Motor's loud. Uh, okay, so good teamwork. We um, unmilkshaked it, I think. We fixed the valve spring, and by we, uh, Miller did it. 
uh, slight issue now, it's really late. Um, there's a golf course community right here, and um, maybe we're not supposed to start the motor now, but I'm not gonna sleep tonight if we don't start the motor now. So we're starting the motor now. Okay, one more oil change, we're done. Tomorrow we get to race. First round, Sunday morning, now we're really racing. Uh, this is the quick eliminator bracket class. So, 1,000 foot course, don't go quicker than six seconds, but beat the other guy to the finish line. It's a weird form of drag boat racing, but it's really fun and competitive because everybody out here, when they're on their game, can cross the finish line in exactly six seconds. And uh, because we ran a 598 during qualifying, which is too quick, we're going in as the worst boat in the field, number, I think, 17 qualifier. So we have to face the number one qualifier, who is also the guy, uh, I think, leading the points championship for the whole season. So this will not be easy. Um, my reaction times haven't been good. Uh, mostly because the first three or four passes, the boat, you know, we had all those problems yesterday. It did something different at the starting line every time. But the last pass, I finally got a sense of where I need to be. And basically when the clock counts down and goes nine, eight, seven, six, five, between the numbers six and five is when I need to hit the gas pedal. So if I can do that and cut a good light, we know this boat will run real close to a 6.0 if we uh, slow it down enough, so. I like our chances. Do you guys take the bird shot out or not? No, we just left everything the same. We didn't want to, you know. We were like, let's just let's just go drive it, you know. And I'm comfortable in it now. Now we're over the winter. We're probably gonna move the motor back where it used to be and take the bird shot out because I'm, you know, I'm heavier. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love driving it. It is so fun. All right, you ready? Yep. Okay. We're fueled up. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Not excited at all, are you? No enthusiasm. None. <laughs> None. Zero enthusiasm. I'm going to need you to smile bigger in your helmet. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I think this boat should be called Fancy. <laughs> Write it in the back, on the back of the boat. Call it fancy with the big old F. It's too Great. soft, man. I can't do it. Huh? Fancy, fancy Finnegan? It's too soft. I can't do it. <laughs> Fancy's not going to intimidate anybody. Uh, I'm right. Yeah.
All right, we won't have a long wait here. We're next up. I'm racing a V-Drive Hydro, which are boats that typically don't leave the line necessarily as hard as a jet boat. So if I cut a better light than him, I should out accelerate him to like half track. And then uh, at that point, the Hydro really starts gaining steam and it should blow and get right next to me at the finish. That's if I cut a good light. If I'm late, he'll be ahead of me. And then I'm trying to catch him. And the danger is, is you try to catch somebody if your boat is too fast, you get to the finish line, you go past them at the finish line, but you've gone too quick and you run a 599 instead of a 600 and then because you're bracket racing, you've lost even though you beat them to the finish line. It's a really backwards form of racing, but it's really fun. I think we're broken. I'm gonna need a ride. I am gonna need a ride. Well, that was weird. Our weekend might be over. There's no holes in it, but it ain't happy. It, it left the line and I thought it bogged and I stayed in it and it's just won't accelerate at all. Like it either broke all the valve springs or something else is busted. So we need to pull the valve covers off of it. I was ready, man. I drilled the tree and it just wouldn't accelerate. And I probably stayed in it longer than I should have because I thought it would clean up, but uh, it won't accelerate. There's something wrong. It, maybe it broke all the valve springs or something, but it is really unhappy right now. Uh, they already called our next class, so we're going to miss that. It's possible we could make the next call if we can fix it. I just don't exactly know what's wrong with it right now. It is now a race against time to see can we fix it before they call us. I was looking for a hole in the pan and I don't know, it's hard to see, but it is it is unhappy. Like it feels like there's a busted rod, but it could be a, just a lot of broken valve springs, you know? I just don't know. We need to go back and pull the valve covers real quick. It, If it's valve springs, it destroyed a bunch of them because it is so unhappy. It was idling at the rope, everything was fine. I whacked the throttle and it goes, Boo! And I whacked it again and he goes, whoa, da, 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 da. I was like, what the hell is wrong with this thing? And so then I'm like, I'll idle it down the track. But it just, just like on plane idling down the track, the boat was shaking. It was so unhappy. I was like, all right, so I shut it off. Yeah. It sounded great at idle. Yeah. Yeah. It was fine when you whacked it in the bits. Everything was legit. Yeah. It is just so unhappy. So I shut it off. I didn't want to hold up the program, but I thought I was going to destroy the thing if I kept going. And the only thing we did was change the launch profile. Everything else is the same, so I don't think I don't think it's ignition related. I don't know for sure, but let's just roll it over without the ignition on, just see what it sounds like, and then we'll we'll pull the valve covers and, okay. and all that stuff. Pull spark plugs and valve covers. Rhythm's fine. Okay. Let's uh, just to be safe. Let's just pull the valve covers off. Yep. Pull the spark plugs. Okay. You want to start it? What's that? You want to start it? Or, or that make it worse? Something's wrong. All right, let's take the valve covers off first. Okay. All right. All right. Valve covers off. Came down a bit right there, but. Well, this is just when he starts it. This is when he leaves right here. Yeah. It's up, I mean, it's 80 pounds right yeah. here at 5,800. Yeah, 80 pounds. Went all the way up to 81. AFR 2, 
which is this side, shows lean. 15.5. Yeah, but it was misfiring the whole yeah. time, so okay. none of that. And it could be an English thing. Because it's fine here. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, it like tried to recover. Yeah. Yeah, and then it, it went funky, it went, but it went on this side. Maybe it's an ignition problem? Yeah, because the engine vacuum is still trending down. We could pull the cap off, and maybe there's something there. Check maybe phase. it was mixing up cylinders or something. Maybe I don't we know. need to check phase. Maybe it skipped the tooth on the belt. Yeah. Yeah, like it sounded a lot like just wild misfires, you know? Belt feels fine, but doesn't. How old is the belt? Mm -hmm. Right? That's probably original. Yeah. I'm going to try to fix these things in here. Yeah. Here, Miller, this is weird. Look what happened to the, where, look where their RPMs went. Oh, wait. Only 10,000. What's that? R660 class. Is that one broke? It went this one's broke again. Oh. It went 13,000 wow. at one point. Right the, the same one? Oh, oh, no, it's not. I'm sorry. That's just. You want me to bump it? Yeah. <laughs> That was, just the, that was just the bottom of the spread. I thought it had a cup. And these also have flat washers. Let's get the other side off. And if we don't, I mean, I'm, actually, Could be I'm, gonna, I'm gonna roll this thing over. Okay. Everybody clear? We can uh, Put it back stick on. the cover back on it. We're gonna pull that side off. And okay. Um, then, we're, then we're gonna start it. Okay. Can we check the, the ignition box for actual rev limiter? Like total rev limiter. It was 78, I think. The box says 11, 12,000. I mean, it was the same file. I just stretched the stutter out. I didn't change anything else. So I don't know why it would have been weird. This thing still get water in it, Mike. Okay. I mean, it's not, I mean, I'm seeing like fresh, not built, this is fresh water. So it's still, it's still pushing in. It probably. Head know, gasket? It's either, it's either migrating through a head gasket or intake gasket, one of the two. Okay. Should we stop? It, just, it may have just kind of broke the gasket yesterday. Okay. Like if it was an intake or something. Go ahead and roll it over again. Okay. Water that isn't yeah, and mixed with the oil, it's right. just floating. So right. There was none of it in there last night. We call the standing water. Yeah, yesterday was probably in there just the whole day. We didn't even know it. You know, we probably ran it like that the whole day. Do you think we should stop? I just don't want to screw anything up bad. I don't either. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, 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 like it may have already compromised the gasket, but I mean, obviously I think it has. That yeah. It's still pushing in. Yeah. Okay. And we had it choked down. Water's yeah. choked down pretty good. Yeah, it's okay. Do we bother starting it then? Yeah, I want to start it. Okay. Warm it up on your warm up bucket. Yeah, Fill the block with water. Put the right. cap on the outlet yep. and pump it up. Close the valve so it's full of water. Yep. I don't All right. Without it on the pump. If you're game, I'm game. <laughs> yeah, no, you, I mean, guys used to run, like, back in the day, all the pro gas hydro guys that were running big deals, I mean, yeah. they, they would just, they didn't have water to their water jack. They just filled them up in the pits with water. Right. I ran my Hemi with no water in it once. That was the only way to get it to not have water in the oil. Yeah. <laughs> so we went an entire weekend to Pomona with no water in that motor. No, you you want water in it, just not. Well, no, I mean we had it, but no pressure. No pump, nothing. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just sitting in the block. Just sitting in it. Yeah. So the next pass would be unblown fuel jet, so we could just turn the stutter off. Right. We're out of QE. Just load the profile that you had in there yesterday for no stutter. Yeah. So 7,800. I don't see anything there. Because you don't really have anything in there. No. Pull up the launch, no, rev a, launch, see what that, that there should be a value. Okay, it's 7,800, yeah. okay. 
Um, does this have individual cylinder timing? Does nope. it have the little pickup? It doesn't. So we don't need to put the firing Four order hours. in? No. Nope. Easy to buy. Okay. Um, I'm going to go down there. If you decide that you want to run it, like I said, just make sure that there's water See? in the block. You, you can't cap off the back. I wasn't thinking right, because if you do, it'll build pressure. Yeah, and it'll... And well, that you, you just cap the inlet. Yeah, we'll just, just close, just close, the, valve close, the, yeah. Valve, close the ball valve. Yeah, so it's, it's running through its profile. Well, we're not we're out of QE, so we don't even need the stutter anymore. We can no. just turn it off. But I don't know why. All we all we did was drag the line over. That's the yeah. only change. Yeah. And you didn't whop it hard enough to to drop the switch early, did you? No. When you said the thing wouldn't go, did you double? I mean, you went. Yeah. You had to have tripped it. Yeah. And then you went to yeah. go again. And then I hit it, it again. There's right to the rev limit. There's no. Which room is what you were seeing. Yeah. There's no profile. Yeah. No profile. After you pumped it the first yeah. time, there was no profile. But it wouldn't rev. Like that was the weird thing. Like it, it wouldn't rev. Well, because you probably got and back into I, it when it was starting to pull. Oh, uh, you know what? Take the stutter out and go. Take the stutter out and okay. try it again. I mean, everything appears to be fine, you know. Yeah, all right, let's do that. I like it. Yeah. Right. Thank Load you. The, Load the no stutter. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe uh, I hit it and it bogged, started the profile, and I hit it again and right in the middle of the profile, and it was trying to hole shot with, the profile's over in four seconds. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, no. I know what happened. Yeah. Okay. I hit it. It didn't go anywhere. And then I was in the middle of the stutter when I was trying yes. to go. All right. And then it went accelerating. Yeah. It's not broken. It's not broken. All right. Let's go boat racing. Okay. Let's go boat racing. So we're still in one class, which so, is heads up. Yeah. So just take the load your no stutter profile. Yep. We'll put a cap on the on the exit now. <sighs> okay. Turn the pump on so it fills it all the way up. We'll just, and then close the valve, yeah. So then we know it's as full as it can be. Hi, every day, man, I'm learning something. So the way this boat holds shots is the ignition system has a rev limit curve built into it. Because if I were to just stand there at the starting line and flat foot it, when the jet boat's not moving, there's not enough water in the jet drive to keep the motor from just revving to the moon. So you build a curve and what happens is, is when you go wide open throttle, the carburetor linkage triggers this switch, tells the ignition, hey, he just went wide open throttle. Don't let the motor rev pass, whatever, you know? And then the boat gets up on plane and then it lets it go and it takes off. So at the starting line, it's idling down here at like 2000 RPM. When I whack the throttle, it allows the engine RPM to climb to 5200, but then it stutters it until it gets to 7600. And this all happens in less than a second. The boat needs less than a second of rev limiter to get it to leave the starting line effectively then you're going down the track, right? Well, when we're bracket racing it, three seconds into the run, we turn the rev limiter back on and we drop 500 RPM for 1.2 seconds, and then we let the engine accelerate again. So the sequence of events is starting line, hole shot, you pass the Christmas tree, turn on a rev limiter to slow the boat down, then let it take off like a bat out of hell and it goes 132 miles an hour. Well, what happened to me was I'm on the starting line, I hit the gas pedal, the program starts, but the, but the motor bogs. So I'm still here at the starting line. I hit the gas pedal again, the boat starts to move, but now our little cursor's over here and the boat's on a rev limiter at, you know, just at the Christmas tree. And I'm sitting there going, why is this thing running so bad? And I got out of the throttle before this ever turned off. And when the boat stumbles at the starting line and bogs and triggers all these programs, you're, you're, you're burned. You can't you throw the runaway, it ain't gonna work. And that's what happened. Well, the good news is, you know, we lost that first class, which is not good news. We missed the call for our second class because we're over here figuring out the problem. I entered three classes. The last class we're in is called Unblown Fuel Jet. That is a heads up class, no bracket racing, no stutter, none of this junk. We're just gonna go try to beat the other guy to the finish line. So, yeah. Um, there is one other hiccup with this thing is that the engine is still leaking internally. We still have water in the oil. And so what we're about to do is make sure the engine block is completely full of water shut the water off from the jet drive that feeds the engine and just go run out there with no cooling system basically which is not smart i don't recommend it 
but uh, you guys at home know I've, I've done this before. Like me and Hemi's, it's hard to keep water out of them for me. Apparently it's the same with big block Chevys, so we'll be all right. I was calling it Little Gremlin. <laughs> little gremlins. <laughs> Side chick is more fun than little gremlins. <laughs> but damn, and yeah, this is, it's definitely got some gremlins. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, you can turn it. I'm trying to keep the water from getting in the oil, and we have an issue. There's a gasket or something that is leaking by. We were filling the block up with water and then capping it off so that it holds the water. And now we'll remove the exit cap so when the it's gonna boil over a little bit, so I let it out and we don't overpressurize the block. Petrovich is going. He's in the near lane. He's the guy we pit with all week and that helped us. Ah, he went red. Uh, all right, so you see the see the Christmas tree? How the, the inside lane is flashing red? That's because he left too soon and he lost the race before it ever began, unfortunately. That's called red lighting. When you leave before you're supposed to and uh, you just lost. It sucks. Um, and it's hard to do. It is so hard to cut a light because the beams are in the water. You're holding onto a rope. Your boat has no brakes. It's windy. The rope's moving around. Your boat's moving around. And now you have to somehow get exactly from the rope to the beams when the light turns green. It's very hard to do. Poor Ken was in the same class we were, the six second bracket. Your job is to get from there to there in exactly six seconds. He got from there to there in 6.00 seconds, but he was two thousandths of a second too quick at the starting line, turned on the red light and lost. That is rough. <laughs> that hurt. Yeah, I hurt, I hurt. I'm not even there. It's not even my boat, I hurt. Bam. I've done that a lot. I've read a little lot. The cool thing about boat racing and what I hope all of you understand is that this is one big family. You come out here to have fun. If you win, you're probably not gonna get any money for it. If you're racing somebody and they break or you break, they're gonna help you fix your boat, even if they've gotta run you the next round. And there is a class for any kind of boat. It doesn't matter if you have an outboard, an inboard, a jet boat, whether you have a propeller, you know, it doesn't matter. This club, the National Jet Boat Association, would love to see you out here doing this. And once you do it once, you're gonna to wanna to do it the rest of your life, because it's a lot of fun. Right now it's the end of the season, but we will definitely be back here next year. We'll probably leave side chick out here. I think that's what we're calling her. And uh, and we'll probably leave her out here store or somewhere and just keep coming back out boat racing. Well, here's a little known fact for you people. The reason we're standing here right now is because of Steve Brule. Yeah, Engine Masters Steve Brule. Uh, I met him in 2000. One of my very first magazine assignments was to go to West Tech Performance. And I don't know what we were doing, but I, I went there to chronicle some engine dyno session. And I walked into that place and Steve Brule had a drag boat in there. And it was one of the coolest drag boats I'd ever seen. And I was like, what is this? And uh, he's like, it's a drag boat. I'm going drag boat racing, you wanna go? And I grew up with jet boats, but just camping out and water skiing, never racing. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I wanna go. I wanna, I wanna know what this is all about. And so I went racing with him and his wife and um, I got hooked. I quickly took my slow river boat and just started stripping it down and taking it weight out and making it lighter and adding more power. And Steve and I built my first couple of motors ever for that thing. Steve and I won a championship together right here at this lake. Steve was in my wedding. At one point, that dude was like a second father to me. He still is. But uh, yeah, we're literally standing here because of Steve Brule.
this is it. All the weekend, all the struggles we've had come down to this. This is our last pass in our last class. This is a heads up thousand foot drag race right now between me with a naturally aspirated 632 cubic inch big block Chevy that currently has a lot of water inside of it. And my friend Jake Yeager, who has a big block Chevy with nitrous. And uh, if this thing doesn't stumble and bog and it leaves the line, it should be a pretty good race, actually. All right, Mike, left lane, thumbs up when you're ready. Thank you. Hey, I don't know if it was still hurting normal it sounded yeah. like it was it, it was going nowhere. That might be a coil going I was away. literally going to say, it sounds like a coil. Yeah. It works fine in aisle when I'm at it. Last that was very last right? Yes. Dial in a 620 on the floor. I don't want to sit around all winter. Last toy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, I got down there and it, like, it didn't work. And in the middle of the pass, I tried it again and it didn't work. 250 bucks. As soon as the Jaegers are out of competition, we're going to graduate. Uh, I, I don't want to go home. Okay. Yeah. So I'd like that again, maybe with an ignition coil that works. Got to be honest. Do you, do you need one? Uh, I borrowed one from them. And I don't even know that's the problem, but I'm willing, okay. to, I'm willing to put anything on this boat at this point to try to get it to go down the damn racetrack. <laughs> yeah, let's go. I'm down. Right on. Let's do it. Thanks, hey, dude. Hey, good run, bro. It wasn't. Oh, I hope I yours know. was. What did you do? 608? Hell yeah. Hey, what's the bet? Uh, I believe I believe he wants two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, me. I just want to drive my damn boat. Two fifty. Two fifty. You agree to that? Yeah. Or, it in. or just beer. <laughs> you guys drink five hundred dollars beer. Go for the money. Well, it did the exact same thing as it did the last time. It uh, doesn't want to leave the starting line. Then it feels like it's just stuck on a rev limiter all the way down the track. And then right at the very end. I gotta admit, I was a little angry about it. I whacked it and it ran okay. And so we're now wondering maybe our coil's going bad. So we're gonna change that. And then uh, we are officially out of competition. We've lost all three classes we entered. But uh, we're gonna grudge match uh, my friend Jake Eger, who we were just paired with um, when it didn't work. And we're gonna put a coil in it and see if we can try to take some of his money. Cause uh, we're racing for 250 bucks, which is fun. Got it. Racing engines, Matt report All right, let me put that back together.
What is what? It just shot fuel right here. Where? Right there. Look at it on the front of the screen. Let's get the scoop off. <laughs> uh, we got to loosen this up. Yeah. Glad you saw it. No, uh, it's got a stuck float. It just shot fuel out of the scoop. Oh. Yeah, we went to fire it with the fuel pump on and it just shot fuel out of the scoop. All right, go ahead. Oh, it's the regulator. All right, hold on. All right, it's not the carburetors, it's the regulator. But why is it doing that? Why is there a... There's a diaphragm in there for boost reference, right? Is that what that is, that plug there? It's not the port for it, though. This one's not know. boost reference. No, you probably blew the diaphragm in it then. Just shoot out the top of the Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, you should be able to hold your finger over yeah. the top and turn it on and see if try it, it... Try it again. See if it... Yeah. Oh, 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 all right, go. all right. Yep. We do have a problem there. Okay. <laughs> we got a lot of problems. <laughs> okay. Still in competition. You got 15, 14, 13. That's high. Got a lot. Way too much. Okay, so now let me leave my finger off of it. Okay. Again. 11, 12, still high. 14. And the weird thing is, is I think the throttle shafts are leaking too. We're just finding all the other things that aren't going perfectly according to plan. Oh, yeah, that's wildly different. Okay. Did you lower it already? So it was higher. I see 7.5. 7.5 flowing. So when it was when, when it was deadheaded, it has more. Yep, seven five. When we fired up early, it was like eleven and a half, twelve. Okay. Do that one more time, please. Yeah. Battery's dead. Seven volts. Yeah. I said load. Yeah. Hang on, let me get my. It shows sixteen. What you do over Yeah, sixteen six and it's seven volts. Yep. That's done. Honestly, thought hidden amongst all the cool billet stuff down here was an alternator. I didn't know this whole weekend. <laughs> Oh, we've been charging it. Me and Blaze have been charging Yeah, but maybe it, maybe it just doesn't work. You know? No, I just... I mean, uh, the charger, but you know, the battery. The battery. battery. Though, yeah. It went down to 7 volts under that, right there. That so I think this battery was put Should have went and dropped below 12. Yeah. We believed we had an ignition problem, yeah, I think it's like two up so we changed the coil. Then we thought, we're only going to get to maybe run this one more, so we changed the box, just to be sure. Then when we fired it up, it died, and... That was when someone mentioned to me, hey, there's no alternator on this engine, which I didn't know. I didn't even look for one. And uh, the battery's dead. So has enough juice to fire it, but not keep it running. It's a 16 volt battery that now is down to seven volts. So the last two passes where the thing would leave the line and then just not run at all, uh, dead, dead battery, you know. So <laughs> this winter we'll put an alternator on it. And right now we're gonna try to borrow in a battery to add to the list of things we borrowed, we've now borrowed a battery, an ignition box, a coil. Oh yeah, I borrowed a valve spring too. Oh man, big things, but I think it's gonna work now. I think it's gonna work. If you went one turn up, go two turns down. Yeah, yeah. No, down is more fuel. Uh-uh, down is down, up is up. Yeah. No? Are you sure? Hey, do you know how yes. we're going to find out? We're going to do it one way and then find out. Yeah. And wrong go. Know it's, here, it's wrong. Yeah, it's not backwards. It's down is down. Yes. Yeah. There we go. All right, so we're a little low. Yeah, bottom of the side class. So I'd go up half a turn now. Go ahead and kill it. I think we found our problem. What happened? Uh, there's no battery, there's no alternator in the boat and the battery was dead. I didn't know there was no alternator. I thought in that maze of black down there somewhere there was an alternator. We're running it and it just shut off and we're like, what the? And there's no gauges. So we plug the data in and we're like, well, the battery's dead. <laughs> Like it's idling uh, higher. Yeah. It's happier. It's happier. All right. Okie dokie. I think we're good now. You know, we, we still don't have an alternator. 
and we have a smaller battery that's only 12 volts instead of 16, but I think it'll be enough to get us going. We're about to go make a grudge race. No matter what happens, if it just makes the trip A to B, I'm a happy man. I just want one clean pass because after this, it's gonna be a long damn winter. There's no racing until February and it's November right now. Good luck, Jake. You too, bud. I'm really hoping it works this time. <laughs> the last couple worked so good. It's been a hell of a day, I tell you. Jake Eager. He's gonna be racing Mike Finnegan for money. Run you, man. Comes up when you're ready, Mike. Thank you. I guess they only run down. Dave comes up when you're ready. Okay, guys, good luck. Fire him up. All right. Perfect. Come on, baby. There goes 250 bucks. Yeah, this this never even went. It just shakes. It doesn't it doesn't rev at all. It just sits there and shakes. Really? Yeah, it's ah, what the hell is going on with it? It is unhappy though. You'll get that thing easy, Mike. Sure. Uh, well, it was, it takes a little time. Yeah, I, I'm still happy. Still happy. Good. Yesterday was good. Thanks for all the help this weekend. Oh, Appreciate you. I could have gone better. That was a $250 test pass and it didn't go good. <laughs> There's a lesson here, I just figured it out. I called this boat Side Chick. Never have a Side Chick, good God. They're expensive, they're unreliable as hell, and eventually they're gonna bite you in the ass. Not a bad weekend. Not an amazing weekend, but not a bad weekend. Uh, now I gotta pack. Blah! Same, same thing. Still won't run. No. It, 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 it won't rev. Why'd you, it, you go red? All right. Something went right. That doesn't feel like winning. I mean, yeah, I won, but man, that doesn't feel like winning. What it feels like is uh, not losing two hundred fifty dollars, which is nice. <sighs> yeah, man. Have a good weekend. The same thing. Same thing. I'm thinking it. It's the last thing. <laughs> Good to see you, Mike. Good seeing you. Thank you very much. See you next time. Right. Look at this guy. I, I didn't not lose, but, but the boat don't run. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> I did get a new helmet. I'm excited about that. Helmet works every time. All right. In what? I'm blowing fuel jet. You do get a trophy. Oh, we were second place with a field of two boats. Yeah. Yeah, you better go get your trophy. Oh my God, I don't. I don't even. I don't even want that trophy. That's like. I don't even want to say what that's like. Uh, let's see. What did we do? We flew to California. We bought a boat. Tried to race that boat poorly. Everything broke. And now we have all winter to rebuild a boat. But I really love this boat. Uh, and if I've learned anything, it's that don't name your boat Side Chick, because then it's going to treat you like a Side Chick. It's going to be unreliable, expensive, and just bite you in the ass over and over again. See you next time on Finnegan's Garage. I guess, I guess you just named the boat, buddy. This is Side Chick.